working with them. Oh, there we go. All right. So, hello. Hello. We're going to start our question and answer series here at our castle, Schlossburg. Thank you that you came all the way. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so, we have a wonderful cast here of actors who travel far to visit their fans. Um, you're all welcome to think of questions and ask. I know that some of you have a angst haben, Deutsch to speak. You can also ask your questions auch auf Deutsch mal stellen. And we can das irgendwie übersetzt zu werden. Uh, uh, ganz nett und liebe Leute hier vorne. And, uh, yeah. We have fun and Let's just uh, start. So who has a question here for one of the actors? I'm sure you guys are burning. Don't uh, be shy. Ask questions. Hands up. Hello. Welcome to Germany. Hello. 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 Äh, naja, bei mir ist das nicht so schwer. Also ich habe äh, im Prinzip mit Maisie äh, gearbeitet und mit Maisie und mit Maisie. Ähm, also würde ich sagen, dass das meine äh, favorite person to work with. Ich muss mal gleich am Anfang sagen, also wenn irgendjemand sich trauen sollte, äh, Spoiler von Staffel 7 äh, <lacht> Ich habe noch nichts gesehen. Das ist auch schwierig, ich mich dann persönlich. Man just said I haven't seen anything of uh, season 7, so I don't want any spoilers. I, I can just add to that because uh, I only work with Maisie and she was awesome. As awesome as you can imagine. just hard to pick amongst the Night's Watch, really. Uh, I would say having John Bradley on set all the time, uh, as annoying as he can be, <laughs> uh, is also extremely hilarious. So I like to hang about with John Bradley. I'm afraid I'm not going to be funny. Um, as you can see, I'm rather old. My favourite actor I've ever worked with was uh, Lord Olivier, Laurence Olivier, uh, who was one of the greatest actors that this country has ever produced. Um, he's my very favourite. Uh, my second favourite is uh, Peter Dinklage. <laughs> so that's, uh, it wasn't funny, but it got a good reaction. <laughs> um, I, was, I was very young when I was... I was very young when I was doing the filming. Um, I was 11 when I started. So um, Lena Headey was, she just had her baby. So she was very, very maternal towards me. And you know, she's playing my mum anyway, so that was easy. Um, but she was a real, like, really taught me through everything and made sure that I was, you know, happy enough with everything. And she was a really amazing person to work with for one of my first jobs, because it was like every, every scene I could just watch her and learn so much. Um, and yeah, Peter Dinklage was great fun to work with too. I was I was really blessed to have such a amazing cast to work with because I was so young, um, so I wasn't really I was thrown in at the deep end, but with good people to work with. So. I would invite anybody with the enthusiasm and the budget to cut themselves a piece of cloth and don a Gren outfit. You can include a giant; it does absolutely fine. But I have seen no effort to try and emulate my performance. I was actually, I was the same as that until today. I'd never seen anyone dressed as me. But, and she's sitting right there. <laughs> In the orange, she's not dressed as me now, but she did her entire, like, thesis at university on Marcella's costumes. So, and she brought along a photo to show me today. And it was one of the most amazing things I've ever seen because I didn't, I'm not a big character, so I never really thought that anybody would bother, but it was really incredible. So she's sitting there in the orange dress with the red hair, so you should go talk to her about it, because it was amazing. Uh, 
I've seen a few uh, Ciro Pharrells, and the thing that always strikes me whenever I see them is that they always look much better than my stunt double. <laughs> My stunt double, thankfully, for everyone concerned, didn't make it on. <laughs> didn't manage to use him, but he was this uh, short ginger guy, and him in that curly wig and false beard was quite something to behold. It's like you were definitely never going to do anything. <laughs> Even the back of your head looks weird. Uh, I've only seen two costumes with me in. Um, what was this, eh? Uh, Indiana Jones, I've seen some of those, and Star Wars. Um, I mean, whenever I see the Star Wars, I'm tempted to stand up and salute. <laughs> because it's such a good uniform. I really love that. What I have never seen anyone come as is uh, Grand Master Pycelle. <laughs> I think no one would do that because they'd have to move so slowly. <laughs> Jack and Hagar's today. Um, I've seen Assyria Pharrell, but I want to um, tell you that you have a very special opportunity today because I know that there's this uh, long standing theory about uh, Jack and Hagar and Assyria Pharrell being the same person. Now, this is the like once in a lifetime opportunity. Um, I will go. Thank you. Thank you very much. Come here, and you can do the counting. How many people do you see? How many persons do you see? Well, it's obviously wrong. Something. Vision. Iron. The, the interesting thing is that actually I'm Tom, and that's Miltos. <laughs> Work that one out. <laughs> So. so an die Zeit bei den Rettungsfliegern zurückdenkst. Was war das nochmal? Nein, die Serie, wo du äh, mit dem Rettungshubschrauber äh, Leute halt gerettet hast. Naja, so fängt man halt an im Leben. Am Anfang rettet man Leute und hinterher bringt man sie um. Was war die Frage? Ja, na, also wenn du dich halt daran zurückerinnerst, äh, was war so halt das Spannendste, was du da erlebt hast am Set? Bei den Rettungsflügen. <lacht> ähm, also ich kann sagen, die Dialoge waren es nicht. Äh, ja, das Spannendste war natürlich das Hubschrauberfliegen. Das war, das war schon cool, weil wir tatsächlich jeden Tag, also ich meine, ich war ja der Sunny und die Ärztin, wir saßen hinten, also wir durften tatsächlich immer mitfliegen. Äh, Pilot und Co-Pilot äh, waren dann jeweils von der Bundeswehr irgendwie, die, die mussten mit Visier unten und Helm, dass man nicht gesehen hat, dass es nicht die Schauspieler sind. Aber wir durften immer hinten mitfliegen und das war schon cool. Also ich bin so ein Jahr über Hamburg geflogen. Ähm, ja, also Hubschrauberfliegen muss ich in diesem Leben nicht mehr. Danke. Can't wait to watch the YouTube uh, videos you're gonna post. Make sure they're subtitled, okay? Let's keep going on. Yeah, sorry guys. This was by a really old show that I did 20 years ago, and um, it's not worth. Uh, <laughs> <translating. laughs> really funny. Okay, uh, thank you for coming, and uh, I would like to ask if you have a wish for season eight or the last two books, uh, something to happen, something uh, what shouldn't happen, or I don't know. <laughs> not uh, not <laughs> the end game, but I don't know. You want to see a bear in the tutu or something like that? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> I mean, just on a, I mean, you know, we're, we're in the end game now. Was it tomorrow is the last episode of season seven? Doesn't look good, does it? <laughs> um, I, 
for it. My, I'm very connected to Aria's story. I really like watching it. I'm kind of invested in it just as a fan. But um, I can't see that going... I don't feel that's going to be a happy ending. <laughs> That's not a spoiler. That's not a spoiler. I don't know. This is my own opinion. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, that's 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 makes me feel quite. Uh, it feels ominous. Actually, I do have a thing. Uh, I do get throne cast here. Wait. No, you don't. Throne cast is a thing which is done after an episode is shown, where two two actors are interviewed about Game of Thrones. It's a very long two-hour interview. And the other, I was doing one the other day, and they were speculating on whether what would happen to Cersei. And nobody knows, uh, but it was a very strong con uh, conjecture that she would die in, in childbirth. There was also an argument about who was the father. Uh, who was the father of that child? Is it? Is it? <laughs> And I personally would like, I'm always asked this question, I'm sure you are too, who you would like to be on the throne successfully at the end? And I think Tyrion. That is always the question that we get is, I know that's not your question, but who do you want to end up? And I just don't know, because I think that at this point it's not about who's going to end up on the throne anymore, it's about whether or not there actually is going to be anyone to end up with them. Because um, most people that you like are already gone, so all that's left are the people that you don't like to be gone. Um, so yeah, it's... <laughs> um, <laughs> um, oh, um, <laughs> yeah, I, but specifics, I think that it would be really nice to see... Um, to see like Cersei kind of having some sort of like realization that she is kind of, she's basically the reason that all three of her children died. So and I think that she kind of already knows that. Um, but I think it would be nice to see kind of like a specific scene where it was uh, really showing her in a maybe it sounds awful, but showing Cersei in a softer light where she's, you know, she is a mother who's just trying to do whatever she she could to save her children and ultimately that was their demise. I think that would be quite interesting. Yeah. <laughs> but that having been said, you must know that the actor playing that part is one of the most charming, delightful, yes. clever, amusing, good people that I've ever met. So, yep. that's good acting. And very funny. Uh, thanks for being here. Uh, Tom, just to uh, debunk your theory of one plus one is two, spoilers, season seven, <laughs> Arya does a good Walder Frey. <laughs> uh, but my question is, um, with uh, some of you wrapping up with Game of Thrones, what do you plan on doing next in terms of projects? Has anyone got any offers? <laughs> no. Happy to work? Anyone? <laughs> That's what it sounds like. That's the sound of unemployment. <laughs> that, that, that's, that's silence. <laughs> yes, you must know the actor's life is a very precarious one. We're not complaining about that, but we chose to do it. But you very rarely know where the next job is coming from. The big stars do, for some time, but not all their lives. And people like us, well, not, can't speak for them. We chug along and we do the work that we're offered. Uh, we hope we'll get the work, and we hope there's going to be enough money in it. I personally am going to be doing a BBC television series, but only two episodes of it. Uh, I personally now take anything I'm given, because I'm old and that's all I've got, except for conventions like this, which are very useful. Thank you very much. <laughs> I still have them.
have one question. Um, do you uh, watch your own scene on, on the show or do you think, oh no, I don't want to see how I work? Or do you like yourself or, or do you look... Um, <laughs> what do you can... No, I, I think I... Oh. <laughs> Sorry, my English is not very really good. I really adore every one of you, but um, I know myself when I see me in a, in a movie like one, one has filmed, I think, oh my god, what did I there? But um, how is it with the with TV of, show? With Game of Thrones, I, I, I wasn't allowed to watch it. I was, <laughs> uh, I was 11, so <laughs> there was no way my mum and dad were letting me see that. <laughs> and, then, and you still haven't watched it? I've watched parts of it, but... It's very, it's very cruel. <laughs> There's a lot of beheadings, and I'm just not a beheading type of girl. <laughs> and I filmed a scene where a horse got its head cut off, and I saw that all being done, and it still freaked me out. Wow. Um, when I, you know, I was 12, you know, you didn't want to see a horse get its head cut off at any age, really, but especially not at 12. Um, so, yeah, I never really then got round to watching it properly. So, no, I don't, but then in, in anything else, no, I feel really awkward watching myself. I feel like hypercritical. I think lots of actors are like that though. I, I would agree with that. I, I rarely watch myself. Mo most of the time it's because uh, unless you really know it's happening, uh, it's, you know, unless you do ADR, which is the first time you, so, you know, you get asked to go in to do ADR. And I remember when I went to do uh, my first scene in Game of Thrones, the ADR, which is the, uh, when you go into, it, because if some, uh, because your accent was weird or you didn't quite, or there was a sound, you have to kind of do, you over, you, you basically re-record it. And, uh, and you're always a bit, nervous about going in and going, I'm have to watch it, you know, you're going to have to watch it and over and over and over again. But I have to say, most of the time I hate watching myself on TV, but this I was like, okay, okay, I don't know what they did, but I come across quite well. <laughs> so that, was, that was a revelation to me. So, but normally I feel exactly the same way, very self-conscious, because all we see are the things that no one else sees, like the ticks and the weird facial expressions and, and questioning why, why am I doing that again, over and over again. So, yeah, we try to avoid it. Yeah, I mean, I look at it always. I mean, man gewöhnt sich an alles. <lacht> ähm, und ja, am Anfang ist es natürlich komisch, aber äh, also es hat auch den guten Effekt, dass man tatsächlich äh, sich irgendwie ein bisschen kontrollieren kann und dann gucken kann, weil man, man weiß ja noch, wie man sich gefühlt hat, als man es gedreht hat und man sieht dann, wie bestimmte Sachen rüberkommen und wirken, deswegen ist das, also ich finde es ganz, ganz nützlich, äh, das heißt jetzt nicht, dass es mir immer gefällt, was ich sehe. Ja. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I agree with Miltos, really, um, and of course with Tom. Uh, every word. Um, what you do isn't usually what you see, so you end up second guessing when you're watching yourself, and really you should sort of imagine that it's a theatre and you'll never get to do it again. Uh, and, but equally do it again and again, but never again. It's a strange paradox. Yeah. I'm sorry that you have to watch the old, uh, scenes over and over again at ADR. I only had to watch them twice. <laughs> you are a professional, that's why. That's it, right? <laughs> well, my answer is quite honest. Um, I don't mind seeing myself. Uh, I don't watch it. I, I don't watch Game of Thrones, for instance. I have, I've seen very little of Game of Thrones. Um, some episodes I've seen because I have, happens to be on and I watch it. Uh, and I have a mixture, I'm sure we all do, of when you see yourself, either you think, oh, that's so awful, why did I do that? Or you think, yeah, that's all right, that's what I meant. A little bit excited at the moment because, um, yeah, when you have the fucking opportunity to meet one of the greatest actors. <laughs> So um, my first question would be um, to go to all of you, and it's like, um, what do you think Westeros would change if your character would rule over it? <laughs> This is my first question, and my second question is, um, Tom, würdest du mich mal heiraten? I would 
consider marrying her? <laughs> well, I, I, I will answer this question first because it's quicker. Um, Thank you. It will be a thorough auditioning process. <laughs> Yeah, we can talk about it. <laughs> Great, it sounds amazing. <laughs> what, what would you, would your character do if he ruled Westeros? What would change? What would change? What would change? If you were the ruler of Westeros, what would be the big change? Well, I think I know what I'd change. Um, after being sent to the wall and being ordered to never touch a female ever again, <laughs> the rule of celibacy would be abolished forever. <laughs> never to be taken up ever again. Um, I think that if Marcelo is uh, in control, I think it would be a bit softer. I think she's she's a very... She's the kindest and smartest of the Lannister siblings. That's not just me bragging, that's in the books. Um, <laughs> but, so I think that she would have been quite a good ruler because she's got the intelligence and, but also the softness and kindness. I think she's sort of more like Tyrion in that, that aspect. Um, so yeah, I think that she would have been kind of similar to Marjorie in some aspects of the way that she was, you know, looking towards helping the poor and stuff, but in a less self-centered way, maybe? <laughs> I don't know. Well, I, I don't know. I'd like to think that Jacken is already secretly ruling Vesteros. <laughs> and, um, Ain't that the truth? <laughs> um, yeah. 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 More dancing, more sword fighting, <laughs> basically. Everyone, yeah, everyone gets the everyone gets the sword. It'd be end and disaster. <laughs> I don't know what I'd do um, if Pycelle ruled. <laughs> Funny thought, isn't it? Um, um, but I know the first thing I would do. I would put Cersei. I would shave her head again. <laughs> I would put her into a cage in the city square where she would have to live and she would be seen eating and pissing and defecating and that's all she would do she would get no exercise until she died <laughs> I see nothing good about that woman at all the actress however is simply delightful <laughs> It's only ever, uh, it only has, I've only ever been recognised when I've been with like Sophie and Maisie and Isaac and then I'm asked to take the photo. Oh, no! <laughs> I was on a convention in Nashville with, um, with my friend Carrie Ingram who plays Shireen and somebody came up to her and handed me their camera and then came up to me later and went, I'm really sorry, I just realised you were a guest here too. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, I still got to be in it. Yeah, it's very sad. It's very sad. Um, it's a hard life, yeah. It is a hard life. I mean, I wake up every morning and I'm waiting for someone to hand me my clothes. It hasn't happened. Um, I'm waiting for someone to make breakfast for me. It hasn't happened. Well, it happens on occasion, but... Um, no, it's... I mean... It, it's no. The serious answer is, I mean, as an actor, I mean, we can we can count ourselves incredibly lucky to be uh, on a project like this that is um, um, that has such a hype uh, surrounding it. Because I mean, that's what as an actor you have to work with. I mean, it's um, it's important uh, to to for. I mean, it is important that your name gets more known so that you get other good projects. And so it's uh, yeah. I mean, that's the upside of of being in a show like that. <laughs> okay, um... What was that? One of those burgers. Um, I, I have got through quite a long time of being recognized in the street. And, uh, but never enough to, for it to be a nuisance. 
Um, I should think the only person on this stage now is you, who, who might have quite a lot of trouble, uh, particularly in Germany, with because uh, he's so famous here. Um, but when you're <laughs> well, he is, isn't he? <laughs> I've always found it very pleasant when people come and talk to me because they're always nice. I mean, I've never been bothered as the big film stars are because I'm not a big film star. I'm just a well-known supporting actor. And when you're recognised, it means you're still there. It's just still current and in, in people's minds. So, you know, you might have a bit of a future. And that really is uh, what it means when you come up to me and say... Sometimes they say, are you an actor? Uh, uh, or are you, you're Julian Glover, aren't you? Uh, well, yes, I have to confirm that. Uh, uh, but normally people are, are very, very polite and very nice, aren't they? And, and, and they don't ask for your autograph. That sometimes they'll want a selfie, uh, but, but not very often. They're usually more polite, as I think all you would be. You've always been, today, so polite to us. And... Uh, that's, I think, the thing that we relish about being known. We have to be known or we wouldn't work. It's as simple as that. So thank you all. Joffrey lately, so who do you think would be worse on the throne? Joffrey or Ramsay Bolton? Ooh. Oh. 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 Tough one. What kind of question is that? <laughs> You're asking us to choose? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think Joffrey had Cersei to rein him in a bit. Ramsay didn't have anyone to rein him in. So I think that in that situation where Joffrey still has Cersei and Ramsay has no one, then I think Ramsay would be worse. Mm. Ramsay has no one. <laughs> <laughs> I can't bandy those terms around, just like willy-nilly. <laughs> Not that I remember. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's perfect. I mean, that is the answer. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, is it still on? There we go. Uh, I just got a message that we are having some problems with our dragons in the back of the castle, and I have to go take care of that, but I'm going to leave you all in very good hands because we have this man who speaks many languages. <laughs> has many faces, and uh, he will take care of the question and answer for the next 20 minutes. And we're really happy here of, uh, at our castle, Schlossburg, that everybody came out today and enjoy your time with these. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I, I love the fact that he mentions that he's having trouble with some dragons in the back of the car, and no one bats an eyelid. My mother in law is here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, dann äh, übernehme ich jetzt mal. So, mehr Fragen. Get yourself into it beforehand. Uh, no, I had no idea what Game of Thrones was. Um, I auditioned for season two and season one hadn't aired yet. And um, so I, I wasn't a big fantasy fan before Game of Thrones. So I, I did a self-tape, and I sent it in, and then I had to meet the producers, and then, for some reason, they gave me the part. <laughs> Lucky you. I mean, uh, similar, I, it was the first season, uh, you get the breakdown, and it says, you know, it's based on a famous series of books, I'd never heard of them. Um, <laughs> went to uh, Waterstones to go and buy a copy to do a bit of research, and that was the first time I noticed that. It was uh, in the fantasy section, it was number one in the bestsellers uh, list. And I was, okay, this must be something. Um, and it's the same process. 
you know, I was lucky enough to have known Nina Gold, the casting director, for many years, and she'd been very loyal and, um, you know, really good to me, you know, over the years. So, of course, she, they were looking at everyone for, for Game of Thrones. So, we, you do the audition, and I had to do the the very first lesson that I have with, with Aria, and it's three and a half minutes long. And I remember I did it about five times until the point, and you try and put it to the back of your mind, like, yeah, okay, so I did it, but it will never happen, so you put it to the back of your mind, and then you get a recall, and you do it again, and a little bit less, a little harder to put it to the back of your mind, until you do it about five times, I, did, I think I did it five times, that scene, over and over again, and the moment when they say, oh, the uh, Americans are coming from America to London to meet you in person, that's when you shit yourself, because you know that you're close enough to get it or lose it, so... At that point, you can't really deny the fact that it's, it suddenly feels really important. And uh, I remember doing that three and a half minute scene, and David and Dan just stopped, it just turned to me and went... Chance to play again in Game of Thrones? Which role wouldn't you choose and why? Wouldn't. Which role wouldn't we choose? Wouldn't you choose? Would not. Would you? Would you choose? Would not choose. Would not want to play. I wouldn't want to be Jon Snow. I mean, the poor bastard. Seriously. I mean, the amount of pictures people take of him, he can't go anywhere. He can't even go to the toilet without people around him taking pictures. So I would not want to be that. <laughs> yeah. Or any character that dies in season one. <laughs> How about that? He's not there. Shut up. <laughs> I would like to I would like to play all those parts who were my age in it. Uh, because they're all once much better parts than myself. I would adore to play Tywin. I would love to play that. But we got Charlie Dance and he's so perfect for it. Uh, I wasn't cross about that. <laughs> I, I just wouldn't want to play one of the, like, Joff... Obviously, I'm not a Joffrey. I'm a female. And, uh, <laughs> but Joffrey or Ramsay or someone like that who people properly hate. Because, like, that's... If you're out on a night out and somebody's had a few drinks and they see you, they're not really going to be able to distinguish life from <laughs> fantasy. And I feel like life must get rough for them at times. <laughs> I mean, the money probably helps, but <laughs> it would still be rough. Uh, I, I, I was struggling to find an answer, but then I thought, I'd hate to play the mountain. It's just <laughs> the worst part. <laughs> he stands totally stuck still in that chainmail that must weigh a fucking ton. <laughs> and God knows what he is anymore. I mean, yeah, I'd hate to play the mountain. I'd hate that. für den Moment. Ich glaube, morgen gibt es noch ein Panel. Also, ja, ja, ich, äh, äh, ja. Ja. Äh, ja. Ja, wunderbar hier zu sein. Das ist eine super Atmosphäre. Ähm, danke euch, dass ihr alle gekommen seid. Und äh, ja, sind ja noch anderthalb Tage.
Ron, if you like, you can sit down on the keeper again. I don't need it. Guten Morgen! Morgen! Oh, ich sehe ganz viele Leute, die von weit gereist sind. Wer ist uh, hier heute zum ersten Mal? Ah. This is the first time here. The first time here. Was anybody here yesterday? All the answers will be the same. <laughs> Can we think of some new questions? Huh? So, um, erstmal, ich heiße Kevin. Uh, keine Sorge, das ist nicht nur eine Diagnose, das ist auch eine Name. <lacht> und nein, ich bin nie alleine zu Hause. Uh, und uh, ich bin ein Teil hier von Schlossburg, von uh, dem, dem Group, die das mal ein bisschen verwaltet. Und wir heißen euch auch sehr herzlich willkommen. Und wir sind sehr froh, dass so viele Leute aufgetaucht sind. Uh, genug von mir, ja, ich bin nur Kevin. Uh, wir haben auch Star <lacht> Stars von überall äh, hier eingeladen und die sind den ganzen Weg auch für euch gereist. Und wir sind froh, mal eure Fragen zu beantworten. Es läuft hier sehr unkompliziert. Ja, okay. uh, so. <lacht> Ihr könnt sogar eure Fragen auf Deutsch stellen. Uh, wir haben uh, gestern Abend ein bisschen Nachhilfe gemacht und um, ich habe einen bisschen Deutsch beigebracht. Ja, ja ich, ich, ich spreche ein, 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 ein wenig. Sehr gut. Sehr gut. So. Aber es ist, ist trotzdem so, um, die werden auf Englisch beantworten, es wird auf Englisch hin und her. Aber wenn ihr eine Frage habt und ihr traut nicht, Englisch zu sprechen, ist es kein Problem. Wir kriegen das ein bisschen übersetzt, ja, in irgendeiner Form. So, freut mich, ja, Sonne scheint, ja, vorne die Gelächter, the smiling actors here in the front. And uh, we'll take our first question. Who's got something that, oh, right here, that hand went right up. And wenn ihr eine Frage habt, ist es, ich weiß, ihr glaubt, dass ich euch sehe, aber mach mal so und dann ist es einfacher. All right, what do we have here? So, my favorite part about the show are the costumes. So, I'd like to ask, what are, is your favorite part about Game of Thrones? <laughs> Funnily enough, it's the hair. <laughs> uh, I don't know, actually. I think, uh, taking away from the amazing storylines and the characters, um, There's this great character in it, and he he changes all the time. But Jack and Hagar, <laughs> I love this guy. I hope to meet the actor one day. <laughs> yeah, who knows? You might never meet him. Uh, what's the favorite part? Uh, everything is like the mix of, of everything, as, as you said, costume, uh, settings, um, stage design. Um, it's, it's all at its best and as good as it can get. So um, it's, it's for us that is something special too. I mean, not every production has this sort of a production value. So it's it's great to work on that. I also like the fact that it's uh, it, it constantly challenges your expectations. And uh, uh, I know the whole you know season one is a long way, a long 
time ago, but that whole thing of the Ned Stark and the ending of the first season kind of set the, the benchmark and from then on the journey and the, 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 the investment you made in every character always changes because you know people that on first impression seem to be people you're not supposed to like you end up loving Jamie Lannister I'm a big fan of him uh, and, uh, <laughs> good we started it off with a little bit of kind of uh, Tribalism, okay. So um, so that, that, that to me is something that I really love, that I literally don't know what's going to happen from one minute to the next. And it constantly keeps shifting. That's very exciting as far as storytelling, anyway. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with all of that, basically. But um, I, I, when I was filming it, I was very young, so I got to dress up as a princess and get paid for it. So that was kind of like... <laughs> The dream. <laughs> there I was just playing. So yeah, the costumes were incredible, really incredible. It was uh, that was one of the highlights for me. Definitely. But like everyone else has said, it's the way it all ties together. You know, you can't have just amazing costumes. You've got to have the rest of it. And so it's just one of those things that really has me on every aspect. Um, I'm trying to think. Well, first of all, I, I love it at any point when. Grand Master Pycelle comes on. <laughs> uh, apart from that, I absolutely admire it from episode, from series one to series seven. I think it is an absolutely extraordinary piece of work. Quite original, absolutely original. My favorite moment, not because it's nice, but because it was so brilliantly done, was the massacre at the wedding. I thought it was absolutely brilliant the way they did it. Uh, quite uh, disgusting, of course. Uh, but they managed to make it disgusting in, a, in the right sort of way. And um, when it's referred to later, everybody goes, ah! And that was my favourite moment. Oh, except, sorry, except for the death of Joffrey. <laughs> You were playing Marcella in the first uh, first seasons, and then your role was recast sort of by, a, by a different actress. Were you sad that uh, you were recast, and were you relieved uh, when, uh, when, well, due to the fate of the character? <laughs> I mean, I wasn't over the moon to say. <laughs> um, yeah, it was. It was a very complicated time, um, but I think that I think that. Um, the character came to a really like great end, you know. I mean, in Game of Thrones, you want a death like that. You want something that you're gonna see, so that people don't, for years, ask if you're still alive, like this one. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I think uh, it was obviously gutting when it happened, and I never really got a proper. I don't really know what happened, um, but. Yeah, it wasn't fun, but I think that um, Nell Tiger Free did a really great job, and yeah, I think that the character got a good end, if not a fair end, definitely. Have anybody? Have no. Okay, okay. Um, I've got a question for Wormitters and Tom because both of you played uh, t uh, teachers to Arya Stark and I was wondering if uh, how you think your characters would feel about her development and if you would appreciate what she's doing at the moment or maybe not so much. Well, to tell you the truth, I haven't seen anything of season seven, so I don't know how she's doing. But I heard she's doing quite well. Um, that is, of course, mainly due to my training, not this. Um, but uh, as I said yesterday, I'm, I'm very glad to, to meet Miltos uh, for the first time because now it's actually proven that we're two different people. You've seen us, you've seen us in the same place, so... <laughs> I have a comment to make actually about um, there's very little it is beautifully done but there's very little beauty in the stories except sometimes 
And I thought the comparison between that wonderful love scene with Grey Worm and uh, what's the girl called? Yeah. Which was one of the most beautiful love scenes I've ever seen on the screen. It was so gentle and so full of affection and so unpornographic. It was absolutely wonderful. Compared with when Cersei in the same episodes, sorry, goes down. <laughs> uh, which was pure lust. And I thought that comparison in that same episode was a brilliant piece of filmmaking. That's my mother you're speaking about? <laughs> yes. It was. So you watch out. Just, just to just to finish that with that question about um, Arya Stark, I think it goes back to what I was saying earlier that it's amazing how because the the initial thing is that you go uh, she has the revenge story, she has the list, she kind of takes out people one at a time, but you see it's it's, it's a, it, it conflicts with me because you go she's brilliant at what she's doing and she is on that journey that you kind of want her to have, but it's uncomfortable to watch because you see that it costs her and it keeps costing her and now I won't give anything away about what's happening in season 7 for Tom but it, it, it makes it problematic and like I said yesterday I don't see that ending well what? <laughs> okay So I want you to ask, when, because of the development of Arya to become a faceless woman, um, do I have to understand it right that she has to find her own personality to become a faceless man? Because at the end of season six, she, sh she said that she's Arya Stark, and uh, that's her own personality. But did she? Can she become a faceless man because she finds her own personality? Don't ask me philosophical questions. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> well, I think the whole point of the end of season six was that um, when Jacken told the wave to get rid of Arya, um, it was some sort of an ultimate test. I mean, this is my explanation. Nobody's told me that. I mean, it's not based on anything but my... Uh, my interpretation. Um, so that was the ultimate test, and Jacken would have been willing to accept um, either outcome. Um, had she killed Aya, that would have meant that Aya was not the perfect uh, candidate to become uh, a faceless man. But since Aya succeeded, uh, Jacken wasn't completely unhappy about that because that showed that his training um, went well. And I mean, the whole point of, of, of training her was ultimately, I mean, was certainly not to keep her in the house of black and white, but to have something to do with what's happening in Westeros. So, um, yeah, what was the question? That's good, thank you. Did you read the books, guys? Have you read the books? <laughs> Yeah, I, I've, I've read the books, but when I first got the job, uh, I'd just come out of drama school and I was signing, we call it signing on in the UK, which means that you're jobless and poor. Uh, and I secretly, I, I actually stole the books um, so that I could read them in the airport on the way to Belfast. I won't say which shop, but I got... <laughs> The first, the second, and the first half, the third. Into, <laughs> into right. Was it winter? Did you have a big coat? <laughs> hey, it was winter, and I had a big coat. And of course you paid them back later, didn't you? Of course you? I yeah. did, yeah. <laughs> and charitable donations. So yes, I have read the box. And they taste so much better when they're stolen. <laughs> It's true that the actors that have actually read the books are the ones that get killed off, even if they haven't got killed off in the books. Because that happened to, uh, to Selmy Barristan as well, didn't it? Because I remember doing a convention with him and saying, he is one of the, you know, he's like stalwart, he's read all the books. 
and, uh, and it seems like the curse. If you read the books and you're still alive in the books, they get rid of you. <laughs> so yeah, that's why most actors don't read the books. Um, I was I was very very young when I got the part, so I was not allowed to read the books. Um, my mum read the first two books and kind of told me what she felt that I needed to know, <laughs> which was limited. <laughs> um, but I told this story yesterday, so anyone who was here yesterday is just going to have to hear again. But um, I she didn't want me to know my character's birth situation, um, so she. Uh, she didn't tell me and I went on as an inquisitive 11 year old and looked it all up and I and she was having a conversation with my agent and my agent said to her is Amy aware of you know Mar what Martella is and um, my mum went no <laughs> and um, we got in the car later on and I turned around to her and I said was Carla talking about Marcella being the product of incest <laughs> and my mum nearly crashed the car so <laughs> Yeah, no, I was not allowed to read the books. <laughs> I hope you weren't using your mobile in the car. Good. I can't even drive. <laughs> James, was there any part of your costume that was uh, uh, particularly uncomfortable to wear? Yes. <laughs> Shall I go first? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you may have observed I wore the same thing all the time. Not, not a very fashion conscious person. Uh, it looks easy to wear that costume. You remember the chain around my neck, made of all sorts of different bits and pieces? It was very heavy. <coughs> so heavy that I had to wear a wrestler's belt underneath my costume and the back of the that the chain had to be tied to the back of my belt so that I could actually walk straight. Otherwise, I was like that in real life. Uh, it was quite useful for that, of course, making me bend over. And also, in the hot weather in Dubrovnik and in Malta and places, uh, it was torment to wear. But of course, nothing to what the hand had to wear. I mean, other people had much worse costumes than mine. Big suits of armour and with the sun shone on them and they were absolutely awful. But I was very uncomfortable. Also, the beard was maddening. It, 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 it was all stuck on beards. It was so annoying. That, so he had us have a yours. stick on one. Uh, and somebody said, quite a lot of people have said to me, did you grow it yourself? Grow it myself? Three years that would take. <laughs> Much as I love the series, I wasn't going to do that. <laughs> anyway, that's my little one. I think for most people in Game of Thrones, the problem is um, going to the bathroom. Because they, they, the costumes are heavy and um, I, was, I was stuck into mine. They had like this tape to basically tape the dress to my body. Um, so every time I needed the toilet, which is quite a lot because I was in a hot country and I was drinking a lot of water, I would have to be accompanied by two of the girls from costume <laughs> to hold my dress up while I was peeing. And I was <laughs> just kind of hitting puberty and just becoming socially awkward and embarrassed about everything. And I was like, this is the worst moment of my life. <laughs> yeah, I'd say the, uh, the armor, the, the rüstung in, in, in season two, that I had to wear were quite uncomfortable. But the thing is, at first you think, oh, they're nice and light. Uh, they're not like from original material. They just look nice and you put them on and you think, oh, that's not a problem. But like after, they're so rigid, um, that after like uh, half a day, your shoulders hurt like crazy and you can't take them off because it's, uh, yeah, it takes forever. So yeah, it was very hard. I, I was I was lucky enough to have a costume that was made so I could move in it, but also have a kind of elegant look. But the only thing I really remember from the the very first time I saw the costume and we were kind of trying it on was that people all that people were saying is that it's ever so Inigo Montoya. It's like all the colours and the kind of style of it, and someone in their head, the costume That's designer, true. had that that kind of uh, character from the Princess Bride in their head, which I think is quite 
amusing, considering once I put that accent on, it was like, it's quite similar. Anyway, <laughs> does anyone know what the Princess Bride is? Yes! Oh, yes. And you know who Inigo Montoya is? Yes! Right? Yes, okay. So. <laughs> Prepare to highlight. <laughs> you have killed my father. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to know, Tom, you yesterday said that sometimes you had to film a scene for several days, just one scene. So I wondered which scene um, you guys had to like work on for the longest time. Well, yeah, so I, sometimes it, it happens that um, you shoot one scene for several days because... Um, Yeah, I was, uh, I was talking yesterday about the uh, season six, the first uh, fight between Aya and the Waif in the House of Black and White. They had choreographed that for a week or so, and then we started shooting it, but for some reason the director kept wanting different angles, and then at a certain point he said, ah, you know what, now we're going to continue tomorrow with that scene. And uh, then the next day the same thing, so we ended up shooting that for four days. Unfortunately, all I had to do in the scene was just to appear in the door frame, <laughs> just have a brief look at what's going on and leave. So I pretty much stood there for four days, not, not saying anything and contemplating uh, life in general and uh, my choice of uh, profession. <laughs> Um, the longest one that I filmed was um, Joffrey's name day on season two, because there were a lot of different aspects to that. So there was the there was like the fight going on, and there was somebody being drowned in wine, and then Tyrion and his army came in. So that was a that scene took about four days to film, and it was in the blistering Croatian heat, and it was I was in my heaviest and warmest costume on the warmest day, so that was yeah, that was the longest one for me. But it was it turned out good for so uh, the, lo the longest one was the first lesson that I had with Aria and um, I remember when we, we, we were rehearsing it with uh, me and Maisie uh, we were kept being told by the stunt coordinators don't worry it's a three and a half minute scene we're going to chop it up into bits and we're just going to film it in bits so you don't have to learn it all right because <laughs> we didn't have a lot of time to actually uh, practice the choreography I think it was really a, a couple of days That's, that was it And uh, we kept being reassured, don't worry, we're going to do it in chunks, we're going to do it in chunks. And of course, when it came to the day, the director went, we're just going to have three cameras, we're going to have a steady cam, we're going to have a tracking shot, and we're going to have a static. And we, you just do the scene, just do the whole scene, and we'll just capture it all. And of course, we just looked at each other and went, oh, crap. <laughs> We've actually got to remember it. So that took three and a half days to do as well. So... <laughs> Uh, I've got two scenes that sort of spring to mind. The first one was uh, when Samuel Tarly first arrives at the wall and he takes an arse kicking. Um, the arse kicking lasted about 10 hours. <laughs> and he it was on the floor and sort of one of the lines was referring to the noises he was making. He was supposed to squeal like a pig. Um, probably a reference from Deliverance, but he, he was squealing like a pig and... I think the actor that was going on him was, I mean, it was all of our first job. So everybody wanted to try the best and hit the hardest. <laughs> and he was on the ground and this guy, after a while, was fucking squealing like a pig. And he was going for it and it went on forever. Um, but then, of course, I got to know him and, um, and quite rightly, deservedly, it was. <laughs> Um, but the second one, the, the longest by far, uh, that felt a long time, mostly for John Bradley, but uh, the longest was the defense of the wall. That took forever, because the, the studio that they used, they'd cleared the eerie out of it, um, and they were using the same studio, so it took a long time to put everything together, and then um, I think we were shooting that sequence for about three weeks. I mean, it went on for a long time. Um, But you know, it ended up being a fantastic piece of piece of work, so I'm very proud of it. Sorry, I have nothing to say on that. 
Um, I haven't had any very, very long scenes in it. Some scenes seem to be three <laughs> days, um, but maybe we're only a day having to stand around being insulted by Cersei. <laughs> uh, but I haven't got any stories to match that. What do you think which job you would have gotten to? Chimney sweep. <laughs> George Steinfeger. <laughs> Mary Poppins. <laughs> I don't know. I, yeah, I think I was. I was joining the fire. I think I was going to be a fireman. Um, yeah, or a thief. <laughs> book Whichever thief. came first. <laughs> My parents had a fish and chip shop in Eastbourne on the south coast of uh, England, and I would definitely be running that place if I wasn't an actor. But I started at 12 years old, and uh, by the time I got to about 18, I was like, I'm out of here, I'm not doing this for the rest of my life. You didn't like fish and chips by then. I wanted to be an archaeologist, but uh, there you go. Um, but thank God acting got me before I had to do the examinations. Uh, seriously, I, I wouldn't have passed the examinations to be a, a professional archaeologist. But I am so fascinated by, the, by history, and uh, particularly in old, very, very, very old history. And uh, that's remained with me, which is one of the reasons I admire Game of Thrones, because they miraculously made it, Game of Thrones into no period at all. It could be a million years ago, it could be a million years ahead, it could be in, in two years' time, it could, it could be any, any time in history, which is brilliant. So no one can say, well, that wouldn't have happened then. Uh, uh, okay, that's it. Well, I'm only 19, so I'm still very much... Um, oh, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> if I didn't have acting, I wouldn't... Um, really have much going for me. <laughs> um, I think probably something in the creative industry. Then. My mum's a, an, an author um, and I think that it would be something along the lines of writing or something like that or maybe because I'm very um, uh, opinionated, very opinionated, as my, maybe something political but um, yeah. we'll see. <laughs> You would make a good princess. <laughs> Only for two seasons. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I wanted to be a, a journalist at some point. Um, but then acting crossed my mind. And I just got into it, like, bit by bit. And, uh, well, the good thing about acting is, uh, at some point, you can, you can try out different professions. You can pretend to be, to have different jobs. So that's... That's the good thing about it. <laughs> Who's ready? Who wants to? Oh, in the very back. Yeah, we see you. Oh, we got one over here? Alright, yeah. We got one. Your legs back there. Okay, I have a question for Mr. Glover. Well, you've been obviously in so many great franchises, like Star Wars, or Indiana Jones, uh, The Last Crusade or James Bond, for your eyes only, and you always play the villains there. Is there anything about playing the, the bad guy that attracts you, or is, was it just... Uh, <laughs> like, like a, a, a chance? I don't know how to respond to that. Uh, uh, well, I always say, uh, so you've got to be a very nice person to play a villain. That's my argument, and I'm sticking to it. Um, I got into playing villains very early in my career, my very first film. Um, before that, I, was a, I, am, I am a stage actor, really. Um, but I'd been at, uh, with the Royal Shakespeare Company playing little uh, nice fishermen and, and uh, yokels in the farm and nice little boys and all uh, that. And I was cast in a film called Tom Jones, which is one of the great classics of British cinema. And if you haven't seen it, make sure you do. Um, and I was horrible in that. I was a horrible young soldier in that. And that started the, the thing of, oh, he plays horrible people. <laughs> but 
it got to a point in the 70s, early 80s, where I did all these television series, The Avenger, The Saint, um, uh, Randall and Hopkirk, Champions, all those, I did all of those, and I got to the point where I would say to the producer, don't cast me because everybody will know that I did it. Uh, and, and it really did get like that. And it, we got a bit silly. And then, thank God, I got into the big films, and I never allowed any of those characters in my own mind to be a villain. Um, they all had their justification as far as I was concerned. For instance, in Indiana Jones, what would you do for the secret of eternal life? I mean it. What would you do? So that's uh, my justification for him. Playing villains uh, is, is, is tasty. <laughs> it's, it's good playing villains because you're, all, you're always up against something or you're all being devious or what, you, it's a, they're all thinking people and um, who are intent on doing what they want to do and that nothing will stand in their way rather like Cersei <laughs> so what's going to what's going to happen to you in series 9 I wonder <laughs> my <already> god <laughs> Anyway, that's the answer, thank you. There are no funny scenes. It's a, it's a very <laughs> serious <laughs> business. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we, would, uh, we were filming a scene where we'd come back from Beyond the Wall. Uh, myself and a character, <laughs> Dollar said, we, we'd got back uh, and we were sort of first. doing shivering acting and, and freezing. You've and one actor who was on set that day, he'd had a few too many drinks he will remain nameless uh, and he his lines were slipping his mind <laughs> and uh, he was on about take 50 of trying to <laughs> sew this piece of text together and uh, one other actor had kept his phone in his pocket on the set and just as you know on set if you forget your lines when it's a production like that there may be a hundred people on set and the silence is, it's just deafening. It really is, it can crush you. And it's awful. Uh, and I was really feeling for this actor and then just as he forgot his line for the 50th time, the other actor's phone went off in his pocket and it was just a very quiet <laughs> And I pissed myself. I thought my pants would never dry. <laughs> That's okay. So this question goes out for everyone. How much leeway are you given from what's on script to what comes out on the screen? Because I think one of the more favorite fan acts or fan favorites that's come out recently is the. Uh, the little, uh, I guess, romance between Tormund and Brienne. <laughs> so, how much license are you in as actors? I mean, it's pretty efficient, isn't Actor it? Wrong. It's like it's it's a it's a carefully crafted thing. So it it's it, there's no fat to the scripts, is there? It's really efficient. It's like you know, I, I, and I think that's what makes the show so great. Um, so. I mean, of course we interpret it because it's only us who are saying the word. I mean, remember uh, in the first, um, the first time I said the word bravos, you know, I said to Dave and Dan, I said, well, how do you pronounce it? He said, well, you say it for the first time. So the way you say it, everyone else is going to have to pronounce it that way. So, so, so I guess that's a certain amount of leeway. But, um, but it's, 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 it is what it is. And you literally, to serve it, you just say those lines without forgetting them. So, so that's the, I, I, from my point of view, anyway. Yeah, well, sorry. Um, that's absolutely it. If you've been cast well, if they've cast you well, you do what you do, and that's what they want you to do. You do what you do. Sometimes things change in the middle. Sometimes uh, you're surprised by a script turns up and uh, suddenly it takes a different turn. But that's an exciting thing to happen. Uh, oh, God, I've got to think that one through, and uh, that can be very good. Um, very briefly, that happened to me. Um, I got very bored in the first three weeks. Sorry, people have heard this before, but um, 
Uh, very bored, sitting at the table, being a dreary old fart. Um, <laughs> and uh, I went to the writers and said, this is no good. Um, uh, I think you better let me go, because it's, it's, it's extremely boring doing this. Uh, and I, I'm a better actor than that. And um, so they said, OK, yeah. And um, they came up two days later with the idea which we followed, uh, which was that I've, I am a very old man, but I'm disguising myself. I'm much more vigorous. Uh, I have a mind uh, here. Uh, I'm just not an old man. And that's the way he survives, by being devious with his mind, by pretending he's an old man. What's the point of getting rid of him? There's no and they got the idea from filming, they'd say action, and I would go down. <laughs> and they'd cut, up I'd stand, and talk to my friends, and they got the idea from that. And that's what happened in that one scene in, it, in series two, in episode two, when I found with a girl, you know. <laughs> lovely scene, that was. <laughs> and I, I, when she's gone out, I do my exercises and go out and be an old man again. Uh, and that was, a, that was very nice, except that they didn't follow it through in the whole film, in the whole series. I was very disappointed in that. They didn't use it. And it was a lovely idea. I had it in my mind all the time, so that justified my being there. But they didn't use it, and I was, I was sorry about that. There you go. That's the answer. Test and five. Yes, it's on. Hi. Um, I was wondering, um, many countries screen Game of Thrones and other American series with subtitles. But some countries, like Germany, um, do dubbing. That we have a big uh, well, uh, business of Synchronsprecher, as it's called in Germany. And uh, Tom already told us at Magicon in Bonn that he likes to dub himself, which he can do because he's German, um, because he doesn't like to hear himself talk in a different voice, and I can totally understand that. So I was wondering, how do you feel, or have you ever seen a dubbed Game of, uh, Game of Thrones version with your character talking in a different voice, and how do you feel about it? I've no, I didn't, I didn't, I thought that they all did subtitles, so that's really no. interesting to me, and I want to go home and find out more. Yes, <laughs> check it out. It. I've seen me, uh, I've seen myself do it in, um, in Italian, and the thing that I find really interesting is that I always ask people this, I say, when you, when you, when the, the person who's doing the dubbing, do they put on a particular accent? for the either the Italian or the German, and they always say yes, they put on an accent, which I think is really uh, a lovely little detail. <laughs> I always thought the main reason for dubbing is that they don't want people to have accents, because the producers or the networks don't trust their audiences uh, to understand accents. That's most of the time, that's why they want clean speakers, uh, native speakers, to dub uh, the originals. I definitely heard that about the Italian. So okay. They gave it a particular regional inflection. Okay, well? Fight, fight, fight! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that story, tell that story. <laughs> I, 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 I told that story, but the main reason why I want to dub myself in German is because uh, it's totally weird if in your own language somebody else dubs you and then you see yourself and with a different German voice. I mean, that's a bit... Uh, you, get, uh, you get split personality. And so it has happened before, so that's why now I'm always trying to have it included in my contract said I am allowed to or that I have the first right to dub myself in German at least <laughs> so I had I had my first experience of a dubbed film last night um, <laughs> and it was you <laughs> in the young Victoria or the yeah so it, it, was, it was a completely different voice to yours. In German? In German, yeah. Of course. The Duke of Wellington play, talking in German. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Prince Albert works. <laughs> Did you see it on television? Yeah, it was hey. on TV last night, yeah. You were very... I have uh, two, two, two things, I'm sorry. But, um, in here, in, the, uh, in my photographs, I have a picture of Aragog from Harry Potter. <laughs> and I did the voice of the spider. Now, strangely enough, 
in any other country, I, uh, in an English-speaking country, I sell a lot of those. I haven't sold one here because you've never heard my voice because it's in German and somebody else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Many years ago, I was in South America and I just made Tom Jones, the film. And um, I saw it was on locally in South America where, of course, they all speak Spanish. And I was appalled to see what my performance must have been because the man doing me was, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> God. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, I wanted to know how long is a normal um, working day for you when you're on set and how long does it take to get ready for that day um, regarding costumes and everything? Like I said, when I, when I started I was 11, so um, the child working laws are that we, can't, we can only work for a certain amount of time and we get... We have to get our long breaks every so often and stuff. Um, so it's pretty easy for me. <laughs> I have a pretty easy ride of it compared to some of the... like I know that some of the people with, with lots of prosthetics, like Carrie Ingram, she had five hours in prosthetics every morning to get her face on. And um, Ross Millen, who played um, the, the White Walker King, um, he had six hours, and then he would have two hours to take it off. In the, at night, so he would be filming for s six hours in between that and get like three hours sleep at night and then be on set again the next day. Well, I, I was quite lucky in that respect because uh, the week uh, took 20 minutes mm -hmm. and the strange nightgown that I was wearing took one minute. <laughs> it was uh, just throw it on and ready I was. Uh, so I didn't have to be on set too early, uh, but then a normal day of filming something like 12 hours maybe, yeah. give or take, yeah. Yeah, the makeup is always the thing. I mean, it was easy, I mean, relatively easy, but um, on Game of Thrones, but I've done some prosthetic work where you're waking up at three, three o'clock in the morning and you're there for four hours before you even get on set and then you're doing another 12 hours. That's quite hard. I did that for five weeks and I nearly lost, I lost my mind. Because all the time I was looking, I was catching myself in mirrors and it was completely not my face and it would freak me out. <laughs> and everyone you were working with didn't look the same either. So no, we just forgot what we each other looked like. We didn't know each other that well when we first started. But by the end of it, we had no idea. Came out, like the, 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 the rap party, the, the end of filming party, and it was like, I have no idea who you are. <laughs> okay, we have yet So first of all, I want to say that you have all done a very, very good job. We love what you do. So uh, how does it feel that so many people in so different, so many different countries love uh, Game of Thrones and to be a part of it? It's a dream, or what is your feeling about this? It's very humbling because it's amazing that so many people love it and it's and it's also more than just a successful tv show it's the fact that it's it's a phenomenon it's like it's name checked in the news it's become a thing so it, i mean you know it's it's a, an incredible i feel so proud of it you know to be part of it it's one of those things that you never think you're going to be part of because you never know you know there's no formula to making amazing drama or TV shows or any form of art. Sometimes it happens by accident, but the team, I mean the creative team on Game of Thrones, from the very beginning, always was making it with the right intention, with the right passion, and that, and we knew that at the beginning. So it's great that it's so, so successful and people love it. Because I love it too. Normally, I, you know, you do stuff and You know, you, you know, it just becomes part of the generic stuff that we create all the time. But you know, I genuinely love Game of Thrones. And I, I think, um, from being, at, you know, um, places like this, people you like you, uh, it's. I think it's amazing sometimes. You know, you see people walking around and 
might be cosplay or they might just be dressed up. And it gives people a real sense of confidence. And, you know, you see them sort of come out of themselves a little bit because they've taken a, set, a, a piece of that show or a piece of their imagination. That's what it really is. It's, it's getting into their imagination. And so I think it's great that it can mean, mean so much to people. And because it has such a wide variety and range of characters that are so rich and detailed, you'll, you'll always identify with someone or another. And I think if, you know, if there's a little corner of your life or your imagination or your brain that needs fulfilling and a bit, of, a bit more oomph added to it, you know, I think it's fantastic that a show can reach out to so many people. I completely agree with that. It's an amazing thing that people all over the world. I was a little bewildered when, uh, you know, I'm like this and long beards and all that. Uh, when people come on saying, Oh, you're Parcel, aren't you? Oh, I thought it was rather a good disguise. <laughs> <laughs> I am 104, obviously. <laughs> I can compare the beginning, the very beginning of, of uh, Game of Thrones with the very beginning of Star Wars, which no one on this panel remembers what it was like to first see, when they were a young man, the first Star Wars film. It was absolutely fantastic. We couldn't believe what we were seeing. And nowadays, uh, seeing those ships going through the sky very fast, crashing and bang, it, it's to a penny. Uh, so the Star Wars haven't all the new films have not had anything new to offer. So it hasn't added to itself, except to the first three. The first three were simply brilliant, I thought. But it hasn't added to itself as Game of Thrones has, which continues to <laughs> add, add, add. To, to reverse who's what you said, it gets fatter and fatter and fatter with material, with wonderful material. And that's what didn't happen with Star Wars. But the initial impact on the theatre-going world, the cinema-going world, when it first came out, I'm telling you, it was fantastic, like Game of Thrones. Uh, and I don't mind being recognised for Game of Thrones, I was only 30. I mean Star Wars, I mean Star Wars, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> can, I, can I add just one thing, that it's amazing that it's uh, a, a show like Game of Thrones has, has made people come together to watch it. Like people, t you know, they get together to watch it on the night it's aired. And I think, you know, at the time when we think everyone's just watching it on their laptops, you know, TV shows and all of that stuff, it's really great that, that it's suddenly become a social thing. And I think that's really amazing. They get the beer and the drinks, don't they, and have a party. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, it's a, it's a real privilege to be a part of, especially because I am from Northern Ireland where so much of it's filmed and lots of it's based and everything. So it's a real... It's really lovely to have seen Northern Ireland, which has had its troubles, uh, literally. Um, I kind of flourish, and now we're getting more films coming into Northern Ireland, and it's just a real, yeah, it's a real privilege to have been a part of something that I think is going to change Northern Ireland for the rest, of, well, the rest of time. <laughs> um, so yeah, and to be able to come out to things like this and meet new people who are touched by the stories because that's, you know, that's, like I've said, it's, there's a story for everyone. There, you don't have to like every single story, but you can find something in it that is for you and that you connect with, which is a really beautiful thing to be a part of. Ja, nee, ich hab's, ich hab's gestern schon gesagt, das ist äh, für jeden Schauspieler natürlich ein absolutes Geschenk, wenn man äh, die Chance kriegt, in, äh, in so einer Serie dabei zu sein und ähm, das kann man sich auch nicht aussuchen, weil ähm, also das passiert oder es passiert auch ganz oft nicht und äh, deswegen sind wir alle eigentlich, wie wir hier sitzen, also dankbar dafür, für diese, für diese Möglichkeit, die wir gekriegt haben und es ist ja wirklich so, dass äh, Game of Thrones sowas wie ein, wie ein Brand geworden ist. Also es gibt tatsächlich ab und zu Leute, die zu mir kommen und sagen, äh, ich habe es noch nie gesehen. Ich bin wahrscheinlich der Einzige. Ich sage, nee, du bist nicht der Einzige. <lacht> Aber zumindest die, auch die, die es noch nicht gesehen haben, wissen, was es ist. Also das ist so, es gibt auch, glaube ich, niemanden, der mit dem Game of Thrones jetzt nichts anfangen kann. Und das ist schon ziemlich einmalig. Ähm, ja. Ja, also. 
I don't know what he's he's just said. Um, um, (laughs) But to touch on what Mark said, this is very serious. All theatre, all cinema, uh, the idea is to stimulate people in some way, to add something to their, 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 with laughter, with with tears, with horror, whatever. It is to stimulate an interest, interest the human mind. And Game of Thrones does that entirely. I don't know anybody in our profession or anywhere that doesn't like Game of Thrones. I've met many people who've said, I can't be bothered with Game of Thrones. They start to watch it and then they are bothered. <laughs> it's, it's quite remarkable. Un- unlike you, you, you might have a particular dislike for a particular actor or a particular television series, or a, I didn't enjoy that. No one. Do you know anyone who doesn't like Game of Thrones? It's absolutely extraordinary. <laughs> so, uh, we are going to squeeze in one last bonus question at the request of our princess here. Oh. And this young man would like to ask a quick question. What do you think uh, is the best actor from uh, the world? <laughs> from the world? <laughs> the world. The whole world. Go, and don't say the wrong thing. <laughs> this is all on video, by the way. <laughs> I've forgotten every actor ever, too. Um, can somebody else go first? <laughs> oh my, do not do that. <laughs> It's your question, you're on the spot. So what's the best no. actor on the entire world? The prince. Oh. <laughs> I'll go for this, okay. Uh, I, think, I think we've lost some really good actors. Uh, I, I think I'd probably name the deceased so as not to piss anyone if you're still alive. Uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman, Robin Williams. You know? Actors. Yeah, I think... People like that, I mean, you know, how are you going to compare with people like that? So, <laughs> I'm not going to disparage between people who are still alive. I think that, uh, in my opinion, unarguably, Meryl Streep is the finest actor. Woo! And the, the standard of acting since I started has rocketed, absolutely rocketed, particularly in film. Some, sometimes I see work which I simply don't understand how they got there. And uh, that, that's wonderful, wonderful. That's why we're so proud to be in this profession. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Absolutely. And I really like Ben Whishaw too. Yeah, I think I, I, think I would echo Meryl Streep too. I think that she's one of, the, one of the best actors ever to live, not just currently. I think that she's really going to get on in the history but it's been quite a privilege to be alive at the same time. <laughs> it's Klaus Kinski, huh? <laughs> well, I'm not sure he was a great actor. He, he, he might have just uh, had some, some problems. <laughs> Which all actors have, of course. <laughs> Otherwise he couldn't do the job. Leider, ja, ohne Schluss, aber wir sind willkommen den ganzen Tag hier zu verbringen, das macht er mal auch. Leckeren Speis und Trank, innen drin gibt Sachen zu äh, kaufen, ja, wenigstens. <lacht> Nehmt die Zeit, äh, geht zu eurer Lieblingsstar, redet mit denen am Tisch und ähm, die sind nicht nur so auf die Bühne, die sind überall, so. die sind wirklich tolle Menschen hier. Und wir sind so froh, dass die hier bei uns als Gäste sind. Um, I know you guys don't know what I'm saying. I just told that you guys are really great people. Not just here, but everywhere else. <laughs> yeah, I, I try to get that one for you. Uh, kurz, uh,